Joker. Okay, yeah, that dot gets covered up by this, so if you didn't have that on there, but you're not supposed to remove that. Crank. I think I'm a tooth off. I'm gonna remove my cam. Oh man, that's pretty close. I think you can almost eyeball this. But I really don't want to put the engine all the way together and eyeball it. Let me see from up here. You can see my pin is in the groove. My all thread is in there, the bolt. And the pins are all the way in the cam. So everything's lined up properly. Now I'm going to clean up the block in the bed plate to get ready to seal it together whenever I torque it down. Because it's got long, I'll pull them out here in a second, but seals that run along the bed plate. And then you also have to put sealer at either end, but I always like to run that sealer along the edge because I've had to, under warranty, replace, or not replace, but pull an engine completely down uh, pull the front cover and rear cover off and pull that bed plate off just to put new seals and reseal that area. And uh, The factory puts some sealer on it, but it doesn't really do good enough. Some engines will hold up, some leak. So I'm going to do a little more, that way we don't have a leak.
good sign. She moves freely. These get torqued to 23 foot pounds. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm checking the uh, end play of the camshaft. We already checked the end play of the crankshaft. The end play of the camshaft uh, spec is two thousandths to eight thousandths. And if you see here, it goes up to three. And if I force it, I can go further, but just relax, it goes to zero. If I push in on it, it goes about to four. So that would be within the spec of two to eight thousandths. Next, I'm gonna check the uh, gear, I'd call it gear backlash, between the camshaft and the crank. Now I've got the dial indicator set up for the camshaft backlash where it so it's basically the the gear mesh where it contacts the crank pulley or the crank gear and the spec is seven to twelve thousandths we're getting three thousandths and spec is seven to twelve uh, we're pretty far under but this is the cam and crank that came out of this engine and that I know of it was a good working engine so I'm, I'm not too worried about that. I bet you I'll be just fine with running that. What I'm doing now is I'm going to check my uh, piston ring end gap in the cylinder. So I'll go ahead and put in I'm going to slide that down with a piston so it's uniform. And this, this one is my compression ring. And it should be, ring gap should be 11 to 21 thousandths. Right now I have a 11. It's going in there no problem so let's go up to a it went in pretty easy let's do a 21 just to see Twenty one's a little tight so that's good so it's actually a little on the big side but it's within spec. Now I'm going to do that with each cylinder and then I'm going to match up the piston rings for each cylinder. That way I don't mix them up. That way I know I measured it. That works in that cylinder. Uh, this set that I got I got this piston ring set from my machine shop. I told them I needed a set of rings and that's what they got. I didn't want anything performance. I just basically wanted a stock replacement. So now I'll pull this one out and check my uh, intermediate or second compression ring.
This spec is 55 to 65 thousandths. And let's see if I even go that big. Okay, I had 25 and a 35 together would put us at 55. And that would be on the low side. And those fit together just fine. They fit in there. So let's go to 65. Okay, we got 35 and 30. And that does not fit. So, what do we have here? Let's try 62. 62 is a tight fit, so 62 is between 55 and 65, so it's a little on the big side, but that was like our top ring. We should be okay with that. Now we'll do the oil ring. The oil ring spec is 9 to 19 thousandths. So let's start at 9. 9 fits just fine, so we'll jump up. Let's do 13. 13 is a tight fit, so I'd say we won't be able to get 19 in there. Nope. That's okay, that's good. That's a, you can tell it's snag it. That's a 13. So we're within spec of nine to 19 thousandths. You can see I've marked one. That way I know each way that each, uh, no matter if I remove this cap or not, or something, and I lay it down, not pay attention, I always know that cap goes that way. But these are fractured. You can see that cap is not perfectly straight. That one looks pretty straight, but you can definitely tell that top one is not. That way you cannot install the cap incorrectly. 